I'd like to welcome you to this evening's program to honor our 100th graduating class at Thunderbird Abbas Academy. I find it a little ironic, uh, people say history repeats itself, but a hundred years ago, a graduating class was gathering to celebrate the conclusion of their high school career. They just survived a worldwide pandemic and a multinational military conflict. Like those graduates, you face an uncertain future, but we know that God is in control of everything. Tonight, we're focused on your accomplishments and honoring your success here at Thunderbird Adventist Academy. We'd like to take a quick moment to thank Good News TV for broadcasting the program tonight and live streaming. Their ministry is paramount through these uncertain times, whether the shelter at home orders uh, to people just looking for hope. Uh, be sure to stop by afterwards at the table in the foyer because uh, they have, you can sign up for copies of tonight's program. Also remember that as graduates are called forward to receive their diplomas, Mr. Reichert will read a short bio about each graduate. So please hold your applause until the end of the bio. And lastly, we have a paparazzi section. So right here in the very front is an open pew. It's not there for the entire, for you sit there the entire show, but uh, when your uh, loved one is up front, either performing or getting their diploma, et cetera, please feel free to come to this front area here to take a picture. Now, when we confer the diploma, uh, Mr. Devasio will get the, the official picture, and then we'll freeze for a moment longer for the parents to get their pictures for their Instagrams and Facebooks and everything like that. So just a quick reminder about that. Welcome to nice program. Welcome friends and families of the graduates of 2020. Um, before I ask the graduates and the, the males to take off their caps, um, I'd like to speak um, for a moment of silence. Um, before I step into prayer, I ask that we have a moment um, in the midst of the chaos that is all around us. From racial tensions, the oppressions of African Americans, and to the coronavirus that has swept our world, we ask for God's peace in this moment of silence. Males, I ask you to remove your caps. Please bow your heads. Dear God, we thank you for the triumph of this day, for the completion of this part of our journey. Thank you for the friendships and the support of the parents and our amazing teachers. Help us to pursue our dreams boldly and guide our steps as we walk through these uncertain times. Please use us in a special way for your honor and glory and to spread your love to others who are hurting. I pray that we will shine your light on this troubled world. Give us wisdom and direction in making decisions. Help us to listen closely to your voice, obey your word and do the next right thing. We ask for you to open doors that need to be open and close the ones that don't. We ask for your powerful boldness and courage to face every challenge that comes our way with the confidence and peace that can only come from you. May we be willing to stand strong and true in the purpose and work which you have planned and prepared in advance for us to do. Please bless our graduation program this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening and welcome to all friends, family, and faculty. Tonight I have the privilege of introducing our speaker, Pastor Zach, aka PZ. Pastor Zach has not only been an inspiration, but a mentor and a role model for all of us these past four years. Through the thick and the thin, the highs and the lows, PZ has always been there to encourage us along the way. He has helped us to shape our class into who we are today, and for that we could not be more grateful. He has spent countless hours working late into the night and waking up early in the morning to facilitate an atmosphere of Christ and has raised the spiritual atmosphere here at Thunderbird Adventist Academy. 
As a freshman coming into our first year, it was also the first year Pastor Zach began teaching here at the academy, and we have gotten to know as well as to grow with him together. Through all the many classes of laughter, there also came some times of tears. As I have found out, as well as some others, when PZ pulls you aside to give you a talk, he will put the fear of God into you, and there will be some tears that follow. But once again, we cannot thank you enough to Pastor Zach, and so without further ado, our speaker, Pastor Zachary Sirovic. Thank you so much, Anthony, for that incredible introduction. Who would have known four years later we went from crying to graduating? Amen, right? The Lord is good. Uh, good evening, family, friends, faculty, and graduates, class of 2020. Congratulations on being the 100th graduating class here at Thunderbird Adventist Academy. You guys are literally, as Mr. Rogers says, a part of history in every single way. Um, I remember I stumbled into one of your guys' class meetings one day, I don't know how, I was just meandering around campus, and I think Mrs. Allison was asking you guys how you would like to be commemorated as the 100th graduating class here at the Academy. And I believe it was Andres who said, as I was walking out, we would like statues built of us all over the campus. I thought that was a little much. but. Considering the current circumstances, I think you guys deserve statues of each of you all over uh, this campus. Surviving social distancing and distance learning, I am proud of each and every single one of you. Uh, this class holds a special place in my heart this evening. This was the first class I ever taught here at Thunderbird Academy. My first year here being as teacher, I got these warm, bright, beautiful souls, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed every morning in my classroom setting. I remember being so scared of each and every single one of these inv individuals. I was trembling. I would go home myself crying, Anthony. That was a, a regular occurring thing. While I feel like I'm graduating this evening, I am not. However, I've had the opportunity to kind of reflect on my four years um, and think about how I have grown throughout my time here at the Academy. And I'm gonna tell a couple of embarrassing stories that had happened to me specifically with this class and how they tortured me. It was late one afternoon at 2 p.m. here at Thunderbird Academy, six period to be exact, with freshman Bible. I believe Kylie Lesky was in that class, falling asleep on me. I remember Nick Howard yawning, snoring. Uh, I knew class was going really bad when Joanna was, the one with the most energy, was falling asleep on me. Well, this class in particular, things were going really well. It was exciting. This was about 20 pounds ago, so my outfit was much more fitting. And I dropped a marker while teaching, and I leaned over to pick up this marker, and my pants ripped from behind, top to bottom. It was super embarrassing. Realizing that this class of students was too distracted to notice what was happening, I seized the moment, and I looked at them, and I said, you know what, because you guys are such a good class, I'm gonna let you out early. What was embarrassing to me shortly became a blessing. And very quickly, I let them out five to 10 minutes early with shouts of, Pastor Zach, we love you. You're the best teacher ever, to which I said, amen. Thank you. <laughs> Little did they know, my pants were, it was exposing my rear end. Um, it, was, it was quite embarrassing. What I learned from that moment Eating at the Thunderbird cafeteria put some weight on me. My clothes no longer fit me like they used to, and I learned very quickly I could no longer wear skinny jeans. That sad reality really grew me. So I grew fashionably, okay? That's very important. Um, the second embarrassing story that I have with this class is once again, it was six period, about two o'clock in the afternoon, and I knew class was going really bad because all of them were falling asleep on me. I was hoping and praying we would just make it through this classroom journey when in a moment's notice, Mr. Pottle walked in to monitor my teaching. He looked at me and Joanna was snoring on the desk right in front of me. She had an A in my class, so she was doing okay. And I saw Kylie with her hands folded trying to stay awake and support me. They did their best as I was growing in my teaching. 
And I looked at Mr. Pottle, and he, he was there for probably no more than two minutes and walked out on me. I thought, surely I lost my job. This was it. This is the end of me. I ran to him after class, you guys don't know this, but I ran to him after class shortly and I, I walked with him in his office and I asked him, "How? what did you think of my teaching, teaching? And he looked at me very lovingly and just said, Zach, well, you could be more engaging. <laughs> of course I knew I could be more engaging, but then I kind of remember him saying something along the lines of, don't worry about it though, because you are growing, you're learning. And while that comforted me, it also really bothered me because my entire life, I never felt like I was good at any one specific thing. And I don't know about you guys, but for me, I've always just really wanted to be good at everything. I'm jealous of some of you guys and your athletic capability. I see you guys playing your sports. You pick up a ball and you're so good at it. I have, I struggled to make the freshman, uh, the soccer team my first year here at Thunderbird Academy. And my sister has her name on two banners and in the hallway of the gym at this academy. I'm not bitter. I'm not upset. I just acknowledge that a lot of us have been given a different set of skills. And that wasn't one of mine. To see your guys' artistic capability, Janelle, to see you draw and produce great things, it's super encouraging, it's, it's amazing, but I've always have never loved the journey of growing. I've always just wanted to be good at something. And there's this verse I wanna share with you guys tonight. It's in Psalms chapter 84, verse five. In it, the psalmist says this. He says, blessed is the man, the woman, the graduate, the parent whose strength is in you, O Lord, whose heart is set on the pilgrimage or the journey. I want to tell you tonight, class of, or this evening, class of 2020, that the blessing comes from the journey. The blessing comes from growing, not necessarily accomplishing some great thing, even though you've accomplished that this evening. I'm going to give you some context. One last Bible lesson before you guys go. Not all Israelites were born equal. Not all people were born with fair and equal opportunity, even in the biblical times. And so some of these individuals, some of these Israelites would have to make a pilgrimage or a journey in order to worship God in the sanctuary. But the Bible says, as these people made their pilgrimage, they would have to pass, verse 6, through the valley of Baca. Now, when I think Baca, I think cow. But I'm an educated person, as my thing shows this evening. In the Hebrew, baka actually means weeping. The Bible says in order for them to complete their journey, they had to pass through the valley of weeping. And the following verse says they would make that place a spring. And I thought to myself, a valley can be dry. It can be barren. It can be empty. How do they make it a spring? Well, it says it in the verse, they make it a spring from all the crying, from the growing, from the journey, from the learning. The valley becomes filled into a spring because of them growing. But the following verse gives a word of encouragement, and it says this, the rain also falls upon them and covers them with pools. Now, we live in Arizona. Amen to pools, right? I love a little rain. I love swimming in pools, even though the water scares me. However, it can be very refreshing. And I'm here to encourage you this evening that pools in Scripture isn't something that's just refreshing. The Hebrew word for pools is blessings. So the Bible says as they make their way, as they commit to this journey to get to the sanctuary, they have to pass through the valley of weeping, but in the rain they find their blessing. The blessing class of 2020 doesn't always come from accomplishing some great thing, but it comes from setting your heart on the journey. It comes when you just commit to growing. This year, I had the privilege of completing my first ever marathon here in Arizona. I went through the valley of weeping. 
You see, I was encouraged because the year before I had ran a half marathon and my time was really slow. Coach Nick was supposed to run it with me. I was suffering alone. Actually, Mrs. Cor Ms. Cortad ran it with me. That was very encouraging. But my time was very discouraging. And so the following year, I said, I will do better. I signed up for the same half marathon and I cut off 10 minutes off my time. I was celebrating. The endorphins were releasing. And in the heat of the moment, I was like, I could do more. I can accomplish more. I'm going to do a marathon. I don't know who says that, but I regretted that. It's like what they say, like, never go to the grocery store hungry because you're going to buy everything. The endorphins were releasing, so I committed to this journey. And I signed up for this marathon. And as I was running, I was just set on finishing it. I wanted to accomplish it, to have something in the books. I get to about mile 22, and I hit my valley of weeping. I was suffering. I was in so much pain. I was crying. I was texting my wife, I'm not going to finish. This sucks. And she was encouraging me. And out of all the friends that could have been there for me, Coach Nick, he was there for me, waiting for me. I found that encouraging. But as I was running, I get to about mile 25, and I don't know if she caught up to me or I caught up to her, but there was this lady who was about the age of 85 <laughs> who was keeping pace with me. She even said hi to me, and I'm limping, and I was struggling. And as I was talking to her, I was like, man, you are doing incredible. She says, oh, this ain't no thing. She says, I've done eight of these things in recent years. She's like, as a matter of fact, I just started running in like my 70s. And I was like, all right, lady, you're discouraging me. <laughs> but as I was going through my valley of weeping, I would discover my blessing. Because she told me, she was over 80, she had planned to do two or three more before retiring. And I could barely keep up with her, but I beat her, amen. Um, I would not go down in, I would not go down in infamy. But something she said really stood out to me. She said, it's not so much about finishing. It's not necessarily even in accomplishing anything. She just, I just, she just says, I just love the process of committing to this journey. I have just simply learned to love running. That really bothered me. But as I walked away from that, it made me think the blessing is in the journey not just in accomplishing some great thing. The reason why this evening is so special to you, class of 2020, is not only because you're a part of a moment in history, but because of all that you've had to go through relationally, academically, financially. I can't tell you how many times Anthony came into my office as a pastor, Zach, praise the Lord, look at what God is doing. It was all those experiences that make it worth graduating. It was what your family and your friends had to go through in supporting you that makes it worth being a part of the journey. So class of 2020, when you move on from here and all of you are going to do great things, never forget the blessing is in the journey. Thank you, guys. I'd like to dedicate this song to my dad, the Kiropa. There are places I remember all my life, though some have changed, some forever, not for better, some have gone. Some remain All these places have their moments 
with lovers and friends. I still can recall some are dead and some are living. In my life, I love you more. But of all these friends and lovers, there is no one compares with you. And these memories lose their meaning when I think of love as something new. Though I know I'll never lose affection for people and things that went before. I know I'll often stop and think about them. In my life, I love you more. Faculty, alumni, friends, and family, thank you so much for joining us on this very special night. It is an honor to be Thunderbird Adventist Academy's 100th graduating class. When I think back to our class freshman year, all I can do is laugh. We were such an awkward group of kids. It is crazy how much each and every one of us has grown, not only physically, but also spiritually in the past four years. Every class, every chapel, and yes, even every Voos ride, not only provided us with hilarious and fun memories, but it molded us into the people we are today. Between class scrambles, dorm trips, senior survival, underground church, vespers, and simple interactions that we've had with each other on campus, I know for a fact that we could spend hours talking about all the good times we've had. Thunderbird has been a home to us and a place we will never forget. And in all honesty, I believe that Thunderbird will never forget us. Sitting up here tonight are student leaders, athletes, musicians, singers, acrobatics, and overall a very smart and talented group of individuals who are going to do great things with their lives. Although we are a small class, we definitely left our mark on this school. There are so many people that we have to thank for our success. I want to give a huge thank you to all the staff, but especially to our class sponsors, Ms. O and Mr. Timpson. You guys have been amazing mentors to us, and we really appreciate all the support you have shown leading up to this very night. Today is the day we have all anticipated for as long as we can remember. And although this is definitely not the way we imagined things turning out, we are here nonetheless. Yes, high school made us stronger, but I think we can all agree that these last couple of months have truly prepared us for the real world. I believe that the challenges we have faced have been a blessing in disguise. These challenges have opened our eyes to the reality that life is fragile, and we are all guaranteed to experience tragedies. What I pray for each and every one of us is that despite the challenges that we face, we keep our eyes focused on what is truly important, God. Each and every one of us has great potential to be successful in this world, but the hard work and dedication that you apply to the things of this world mean nothing if you don't use these same qualities to stay focused on God. My wish for us as a class is to apply 2 Corinthians 4.18 to our lives each and every day. It says, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. God is always the answer, my friends. That is what will bring you the greatest joy and fulfillment in life. And although we may never meet together as a class again here on this earth, I pray to see each and every one of you in heaven where we can do senior survival part two. Thank you. So the athletic department has impacted the senior class greatly during these last four years. So we decided that we wanted to give back. 
before we leave TAA. The class of 2020 has decided to donate a custom scores board with the, tape, with the school's name on it to be used at home games played in the gymnasium. We hope that Coach Alex and the athletic department will find our gift of use for many years to come. In a <laughs> Now, in addition to the class scoreboard, the class of 2020 has established a scholarship of $1,000 to pay it forward. For the next two years, one $500 scholarship will be given to one student who meets or exceeds the following criteria. In academics, a C average or GPA improved by 0.5 letter grade, semester over semester, spiritual and service, submit an essay on how service impacted spiritual growth, financial need and conduct citizenship, no demeters or classes repetitive due to attendance. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as a class historian, I present to you a small trip back to the good times of our class. We enjoyed over these years. As a yearbook editor and class mom, it has been my life's work from the day I stepped foot onto Thunderbirds campus. Now, at the end of senior year, while we are, have our opportunities to see the world and find and pursue our passions, never to forget a t also to take a selfie of where we are and post it with our friends. I know this because I grew up with all of them. I enjoy making this video for all of my class and enjoying seeing how much Prince changed from freshman year. <laughs> So, hashtag this, guys. We did it. Thank you.
Take these broken wings and learn to fly all your life. You were only waiting for this moment to arise. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these sunken eyes and learn to see. This moment to be free Blackbird flying Blackbird flying Into the light of the dark black night Ah, Singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly All your life You were only waiting for this moment to arise You were only waiting for this moment to arise You were only waiting for this moment to arise You were only waiting for this moment to arise. Last year I was approached by some parents who wanted to start an endowment for Mr. Ben Purvis, who was our music teacher and retiring at that time. Part of what they wanted to do was to continue his music ministry legacy and what he had done here at Thunderbird Academy. And with that, the Ben Purvis Musical Scholarship Endowment began. It was this continuation of his legacy that started this. And each year, a junior who displays exceptional musicianship, a dedicated practice and work ethic, a persistence and drive for growth, and a commitment to sharing their musical talent with the community would be awarded. This year, I would like to have Ms. Talia Shoup, our new music director, present that award to our winner. The recipient of this um, endowment this year is Eric Marcellier. Eric, come on up. Um, <laughs> Eric is receiving this award for several reasons. Um, first, his excellent musicianship, for his dedication to the ensembles and their success, um, for his persistent and his practice ethic, but most importantly, for his commitment to sharing his, er, for his commitment to sharing his musical gifts from God with others. Eric works hard, always gives his best, and is extremely supportive, and the music department is stronger because of him. Eric, thank you so much, and congratulations. Thank you. So there's a variety of awards that come from um, both our union um, as well as memorial awards um, from our own campus and then also um, from families who have been involved here in the past and would like to honor students. So the first award we'd like to honor uh, comes from the Pacific Union. 
Um, it's called the Caring Heart Award. It's presented to a senior with a strong citizenship record who has given evidence of a personal commitment to witnessing and service activities by exhibiting initiative and responsibility for carrying through on such activities. The student serves as an overall example to other students on campus of kindness, compassion, and consideration for others. This is the down here. And quite frankly, we had two individuals that we just couldn't decide between. And so we I would like to honor two individuals with the Caring Heart Award, Janelle Gregario and Crystal Smith. The second award um, is one that's near and dear to many people here at Thunderbird Adventist Academy. It's given in memory of a student, um, Andrew Murphy. This is awarded to a junior who best exemplifies the spirit of Andrew, a young man who boldly went, faithfully served, and successfully lived. As an example to others of a person who is hardworking, a faithful student involved with extracurricular activities, who openly shares their faith, and lives a lifestyle that reflects his or her faith. Although he could not be here tonight, we'd like to acknowledge this year's winner, Alfredo Trevedon. The last award we'd like to recognize is a scholarship award and is given to seniors who have exhibited Christ-like behavior, shared it with their classmates, and will continue to do so in their vocation and in their community. We'd like to honor two individuals with the Von Poli Hardin Scholarship, Savannah Cortad and Nick Howard. There's two individuals I'd like to recognize tonight. Um, one is one of our own staff members um, who, do, do you have this on, the, on your, did you get it? Yes. Nice. Stand, stand up, stand up, coach. So coach Alex now has a master's robe because he just graduated with his master's degree. And I wanted to mention one of our seniors. Um, he came to me today and he wanted to, something was, he had a deep impression on his heart. And he wanted to take a moment of silence this evening. And we had, we had a heart to heart conversation about that. And Nick, I just wanted to thank you for your commitment to your community and for your drive to stand up for what's right. And I appreciate you taking the voice and the, and the time to talk to me because that says a lot about who you are and who you're going to be. I interviewed Nick earlier this year uh, for something. He talked about one of his dreams is he wants to go back into the community to teach um, kids how to, to play musical instruments. And that's something that he's committed to is giving back to the community. So there's no scholarship, no award necessarily, but my heartfelt thanks to you for being willing to stand up and take a stand. Thank you, Nick. class of 2020 has accomplished a lot during their time at Thunderbird Adventist Academy. 
12 are members of the National Honor Society, six are graduating with academic honors, seven with high academic honors, and 14 have received the President's Award for Academic Excellence or Achievement. This means that 59% of the students you see before you tonight are graduating with a GPA of at least 3.5. We would also like to take a moment to acknowledge the tremendous hard work and achievement of two of our students who are graduating with a GPA of 4.0 or higher. And if you could please stand, Savannah Cortad and Victor Ndagijemana. If you turn in your program to page seven, you will see further evidence of the excellent academic success of these students. The scholarships listed here, which represent academic, leadership, character, athletic, and trade scholarships, represent a total of over $1.3 million. Please join me in recognizing the accomplishments and hard work of this class. The class of 2020 is the 100th graduating class of this institution. Since its beginning, what is now known as Thunderbird Adventist Academy has striven to educate for eternity and to provide a place where its students can excel, experience Jesus, communicate clearly and think critically, embrace service and leadership, and live healthfully in body and mind. Like the 99 classes that have walked before them, the class of 2020 has had their own unique experience and their own lasting mark here at TAA. Of the 22 candidates for graduation, 15 have attended TAA for all four years of their high school experience. Three are the child or grandchild of an alumnus. 13 were members of a varsity sports team this year. Three are CAA All-State athletes. And five were a part of at least one musical group during their last high school year. As they go forward tonight, I challenge them to remember that the choices that they make every day have consequences that echo throughout eternity, and that will affect their generation moving forward and those to come. May you always have great expectations for yourselves, your families, and your community of friends. Thunderbird Adventist Academy challenges you to strive for excellence in all that you do, to be kind, and to spread the love of Jesus wherever you go. Mr. Chairman of the Thunderbird Adventist Academy Board of Directors, it is my privilege to present to you tonight 22 candidates for the conferring of a high school diploma. As the Registrar of Thunderbird Adventist Academy, I have examined the records of our candidates for graduation and can certify that they have successfully completed the requirements of the Pacific Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, the Arizona Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, and the State of Arizona to receive their high school diploma diploma as noted in your program. Will the first row of candidates please rise. Betsabe Alvarez Espinosa. During her time at TAA, Betsy enjoyed reading Pride and Prejudice in English class with Miss Bauer and doing Butterflies and Three Highs in Acro. After graduating, she plans to take a course in natural medicine before attending Montemorelos University in Mexico and hopes to one day attend medical school. Savannah McGee Cortad. Savannah says that one of the things she will always remember about TAA is the 2019 Brazil mission trip, sleeping in hammocks as they traveled along the Amazon River and singing the song, Take Me Home, Country Roads, by John Denver when they went to bed. She also loved playing volleyball, basketball, and working out in the TAA weight room with friends. After graduating, she plans to attend Walla Walla University and hopes to one day become an emergency room nurse and a mom. Cora Ann Day. 
Cora says that something she will always remember about TAA is being an officer in the student association, being a drama coordinator, student leader, and being an RA in the dorm. Some of her favorite memories include senior survival, leadership camp, faith, hope, loves, and vespers. After graduating, she plans to attend Grand Canyon University to pursue a degree in pediatrics and hopes to one day attend Loma Linda University Medical School. Anthony Joseph DeWitt. During his time at TAA, Anthony enjoyed being a part of the music program, being a dorm class and student association officer, Spirit Week, and Lake Day. He says he will always remember passing Algebra One, the people he has met in the past four years, economics, and the support of his teachers and friends throughout the years. After graduating, he plans to attend Grand Canyon University to pursue a degree in Homeland Security and Emergency Management, and looks forward to being a detention officer with the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office and moving up to Deputy Sheriff in the future. Bradley Full. Bradley says that some of the things he loved about TAA were his sophomore and junior history classes and the Philippines mission trip. After graduating, he plans to attend Walla Walla University to major in mechanical or robotic engineering, and he hopes to one day work in the engineering field. Janelle Francine Echave Gregorio. <laughs> Poetry Club, being a part of the Student Association, and being in handbells all four years are a few of the things that Janelle enjoyed while attending TAA, as well as making the yearbooks from her freshman year to her senior year. After graduating, she plans to attend Arizona State University, where she will major in biochemistry, with plans to become a forensic scientist or hematologist. <laughs> Nicholas Earl Walter T. Howard. During his time at TAA, Nick enjoyed playing basketball all four years, playing on the soccer team, being an acro, playing for Faith Hope Love programs, and organizing and playing for chapels. His favorite trips were Acro Fest, Fest where he learned a lot, heard a lot, and ate a lot, and the basketball tournament in Texas during his freshman year. After graduating from TAA, he plans to attend Grand Canyon University and major in business entrepreneurial studies with the goal of one day being wildly successful. Ransom Kamanzi. During his time at TAA, Ransom enjoyed senior survival, playing FIFA with the boys, being on the basketball, soccer, and volleyball teams, and being on the Faith, Hope, Love praise team. He will always remember being a part of the state championship winning boys volleyball team. After graduating from TAA, he plans to attend Arizona State University and major in biology with the goal of one day being rich. Kylie Danielle Lesky. <laughs> Kylie says that her favorite year at TAA was her sophomore year and says she will always remember winning the basketball playoff game that got the team a banner and sent them to the state semifinals as everyone in the stands cheered for them, as well as all the laughs, jokes, and school events she has shared with her classmates. She also loved playing basketball and volleyball, being a part of SA and student ministries, as well as being in Corral. After graduating, she plans to attend Grand Canyon University with hopes to transfer to Andrews University and hopes to one day become a children's counselor. <laughs> Ruth Lois Mock. During her time at TAA, Ruth enjoyed being a part of the volleyball team and says she will always remember Lake Day and senior survival. After graduating, she plans to attend Grand Canyon University to pursue a degree in business management and looks forward to traveling the world and owning her own business in the future. <laughs> Ms. 
Victor Dagijimana. Victor says that one of the things he will always remember from his time at TAA is the Uplift Chapel with Miss Turk and Miss Bauer. He also enjoyed all of the math and science classes that he took over the years. After graduating, he plans to take a gap year to apply to different universities and see what interests him moving forward, and he hopes to one day work in the engineering field. Enoch Ndashimye. Being a part of the soccer team, class activities and events, and ACRO are a few of the things that Enoch enjoyed while attending TAA, as well as participating in basketball. After graduating, he plans to attend Grand Canyon University, where he will pursue an interest in information technology with future plans to be very successful. Stephen Mark Olson. Being with friends and doing fun activities with his class are a few of the things that Stephen enjoyed while attending TAA, as well as being on the baseball team all four years. After graduating, he plans to attend La Sierra University, where he will pursue an interest in medicine with plans to become a family physician or a neurosurgeon. Teva Liat Olstad. Teva says that something she will always remember about TAA is dorm life and all of the meaningful friendships that she formed there. She will also miss working out every day with Savannah, Crystal, and Francine and having fun hobbies like doing homework. After graduating, she plans to take a gap year abroad to figure things out and hopes to one day have a job that makes big bucks and allows her to pursue her interests in health, exercise, and learning. Andres Reynaldo Picos. Andres says that some of the things he will always remember about TAA are going to away games with the soccer team and being on the volleyball team. He also loved playing soccer on the tennis courts with friends and the Bible classes that he took. After graduating, he plans to attend Mesa Community College and hopes to one day become a physical therapist. <laughs> Gustavo Allen Riffel. Being a part of the soccer team and senior survival are a few of the things that Gustavo enjoyed while attending TAA, as well as participating in other sports, organizing music teams, and leading out in faith, hope, love. After graduating, he plans to attend Grand Canyon University, where he will pursue an interest in biology with an emphasis in pre-medicine with future plans to attend medical school. Mariana Cristina Rios. Mariana says that some things she will always remember about TAA are underground church, senior Bible with Pastor Zach, and faith, hope, love events. She will also miss helping out with Vespers programs and her student leadership positions. After graduating, she plans to attend Grand Canyon University and hopes to one day be a psychologist. Joanna Danielle Rivas. <laughs> Playing on the soccer, volleyball, and basketball teams are a few of the things that Joanna enjoyed while attending TAA, as well as class volleyball. After graduating, she plans to attend Andrews University, where she will major in political science and Spanish, with plans to become a lawyer. Yannick Prince Ramatwara. Being a part of the dorm atmosphere, 
And going on the dorm California trip are a few of the things that Prince is thankful for while attending TAA, as well as participating in sports, particularly trying volleyball, even though it was short-lived. He is also grateful to have been involved in campus ministries, which he learned a lot from. After graduating, he plans to attend Grand Canyon University, where he will pursue an interest in computer science with an emphasis in big data analytics, with plans to become a software developer at a respected company, as well as producing multiple income streams and acquiring wealth. He would like to give a big thank you to all of his family for giving him the opportunity to come to TAA. Daniel Flores Sarabia. Danny says that one of the things he will always remember about TAA is experiencing foreign policy firsthand in France. He also loved being a part of the soccer team. After graduating, he plans to attend Grand Canyon University, where he plans to major in biology with an emphasis in pre-medicine and hopes to one day become a dermatologist. Crystal Faith Smith. During her time at TAA, Crystal enjoyed being uh, in Acro, going to Acrofest, the dorm trip to California, being a part of Faith Hope Love, movie nights in the dorm, and decorating the dorm for Christmas. After graduating, she plans to attend Oakwood University to pursue a degree in biology and hopes to one day establish a career as a radiologist. Please join me one last time in congratulating our graduates of 2020. So I stand between you and getting out. <laughs> But if you don't mind, indulge me for a couple minutes. In case you have been sleeping for the last 90 minutes, this is the class of 2020, who is also the 100th graduating class of Thunderbird Adventist Academy. <laughs> class of 2020, you've made a lot of memories. We've seen just a few of them this, to, this evening. But like you, those on the walls that you see before you, all those composite pictures are ones who have gone before you with the same dreams, the same hopes, the same aspirations. But I wanna challenge you I want to challenge you to step it up and continue to pay it forward. Ladies and gentlemen, this class has started a scholarship already, a $1,000 scholarship for the next two years to support their fellow classmates, their fellow schoolmates in being able to be here. Thank you, class of 2020. A hundred years is a lot of years. A hundred years is a long legacy, and one that Arizona Academy and Thunderbird Adventist Academy graduates should be very proud of. And I hope that you take that with you, that when people say, where did you graduate from? It is a proud Thunderbird Adventist Academy. And why? Because we're family, and family sticks together. It doesn't matter, good or bad. You are TAA family. Those on the walls are TAA family. And can you imagine what it's gonna be like in heaven when we all get together for that reunion? Ladies and gentlemen, these graduates before you join over 3,250 
other graduates, plus those that have attended Thunderbird Adventist Academy in the last 100 years. Thank you for supporting our graduates in this legacy. This is a very rich legacy of Adventist education and one that everyone in this room should be thankful and proud to be a part of. Tonight, you received a box from me. Well, I didn't totally pay for it, but it's from alumni. And in this box is a small token for you to remember Thunderbird. And there's a meaning behind it. So the clock, for some of you might need to remind you to get somewhere on time, but more importantly, I want this to remind you of your time here at Thunderbird. The good times and bad, the memories that you made. The logo underneath is the family that you will always be a part of. And the saying, Centennial Class of 2020, congratulations. That's something to hold proud. No one else can ever say that they hold that title. And the very last thing is a memory verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. And I think that most of us know exactly how that reads. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans that you will prosper, plans that you will not be harmed, plans to give you hope for a future. Not just a future here on earth, but a future in heaven. And I hope that that little reminder will always bring you back to re your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because above all, that is what Thunderbird and Adventist education is about. It's time. <laughs> gentlemen, our new alumni class of Thunderbird Adventist Academy. Before uh, Pastor Zach uh, says the closing prayer and we leave from here, we just want to very quickly acknowledge one graduate who is graduating but could not be here with us tonight. He's hopefully watching on the live stream all the way from Thailand. So we just want to congratulate him, uh, Panupong Pliankau. I would like to invite the class of 2020 to please stand with me, um, remove your caps along with me as well as uh, faculty as we close with a word of prayer this evening. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the blessing of grad these 2020 seniors graduating, Lord. They've come a long way. They've experienced a lot of things. And we thank you that despite the everything that's happening, they can still have this moment in history. Continually be with them. Guide them, Father. And if they're ever struggling and feeling like they're not accomplishing anything, help them to always remember the blessing is in the journey and that they're always growing. We pray this in your name. Amen. <laughs>